thank you in advance because you know what we've got in the room are people who really care about a different way of doing uh, education as well as uh, a values-based approach uh, to changing the world. So thank you very much and I hope we have a, a great day together. Um, I wanted to uh, just quickly run through the aims of the day with you before I hand over to other colleagues. And, you know, it's not going to be all talking from the front, as you would expect, uh, from a cognitive or adult education event. <laughs> uh, but this is fundamentally what we want to do today. We want to showcase what's different about a cognitive university. And I'm really careful in using the word A rather than the because every single person in this room might have a different view about what a cooperative university is. And we're extremely mindful of that. In the way we ran our conference in November 2017, and you'll remember those of you who attended, we said, we haven't got a blueprint here. You know, we're not saying this is how it should be, but this is how we, democratically, along with a great group of people and colleagues, this is where we've got to. There's huge learning that needs to keep going, but we want to showcase today what we think is different about a cooperative university. We also want to outline the programmes and the offer that we're planning on starting from January 2020. If all goes according to plan, that's when it's really going to happen. We also want to introduce you to the Federation of Higher Education Cooperatives. And you'll appreciate this is a very exciting thing. I'm going to say the phrase now, but I'm also going to say it down the line, which is the Cooperative College is amongst equals in terms of its higher education partners. And that's the way we look at it, that's the way we work. So we want to introduce you to the Federation. We also, if your lunch doesn't come free as always, would like to engage you in designing some curricula. We've got lots of ideas about how we think the teaching, learning and research should go in this cooperative university. But everybody in this room, because we have a very strong view about where knowledge comes from, which is everywhere and amongst everyone, people in this room are going to ask you to help make a contribution to that. So it's very much, and it's not, you know, it's a very much an authentic uh, day in this afternoon in terms of trying to get that that ready, really, so we can start thinking about your ideas and ours and how they intersect. And then finally, to discuss how you can get involved. And that will be, as we'll point out later on, in lots of different ways. So... What do you think is distinctive about Corporate University? Thanks, Mike. Um... There's lots of things actually, but I and I was kind of scribbling on the train this morning thinking about this, um, especially as the trains are late, so that helps. Um, and I decided there were kind of four things for me. Um, and they're, they're not the only four things, but they're the four things that I think really matter. One is the purpose um, of the Cockatoo University, and, um, and it's, its aims really, its purpose. Um, for me, that is about um, helping to create learners and uh, active participants in society who can see things in a different way, can ask questions, can reflect, and think of new ways of organising society that meet some of the really serious challenges we're currently facing, and not only in this country, but more widely. And, um, so I think that that is an extremely kind of important idea from my point of view. Thinking about alternative ways of uh, organising society, living our lives, and um, and informed by, uh, from my point of view, by cooperative values and principles. Um, I think the the second thing is the learning process. Um, I think it's extremely important for a cooperative university to have a a fully engaged learning process with learning participants. So, um, and that means not only thinking about um, interaction, interactive study, um, which I'm, I'm sure all of us know an awful lot about, but it's actually also about thinking about how do learners participate in building that knowledge and in creating that knowledge and also bringing their own knowledge 
Um, and we sometimes, I think, forget that people come to, to learning with huge life experience already, and particularly as our learners. And bringing that um, it is, is into the picture is a very important part of the process. Uh, so their engagement. Um, and their engagement also, this is the third point, in a governance structure. So a very different governance structure from current conventional universities, um, which I think is, is a, a pretty important dimension as well, a more uh, participatory democratic governance structure. Uh, for both learners and for, for staff involved, all staff, not just academic staff. <coughs> um, and then the fourth one is um, to produce learners who are playing key roles in producing a different kind of future. Um, this is a really critical thing. Some of you mentioned climate convention. I mean, underlined the issue of climate change earlier. And this is massive for us. What is it, as, as um, Luke said, what is the point in education if we have no world in which to, um, to live and, 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 and differently organised from how we are now with different values? So that's for me as part of The days this year that we don't have a reference and we don't have many models you know, of how the universities are in the world, and we have the risk to generalise. Uh, and in terms of what a cooperative university might be. In other sectors, we have such a diversity of understandings of what the co-ops are. We have uh, consumer co-ops, private co-ops, worker-owned co-ops. I can talk to you a little bit about my experience as a, as a student and now a member of a worker-owned cooperative university created in 1997 in the Basque country. And uh, as a confederated uh, university of three, three previously existing uh, colleges, uh, faculty of uh, engineering, business, and education. Uh, I think there are three elements, in my opinion, which are unique about the cooperative university. That's at least in our case. The first one is participation in management and in capital. Okay, being owners and being also protagonists. And the tensions, and I think Mike also observed that when uh, he conducted his research in, uh, in, in Montreal, the tensions of we workers uh, as being members and, and workers uh, that we need to deal every day, the tensions that the students have to deal uh, in this dichotomy of being students and being also members of the, of the co op, and also the tensions that uh, collaborating members. Which are, which are the three and the third type of members of our universe have to deal uh, in collaborating with the university. The second issue is about democracy and how decisions are, bit, uh, are taken. And, uh, and I can really tell you not just in interacting the members in the governing board, but how you trust, the, how you give trust also to, to the elected members. And, and the sense that uh, the, the final decisions is in the members, the final uh, the direction of the universe is in the hands of, is really in the hands of the of the members, and that imprints a very particular leadership in those people who are involved in management of the cooperative university. And the third one being a uh, confederated university is autonomy, solidarity. We have the pain and solidarity. Uh, of a scheme of one to three, and, and also co-responsibility. And uh, the sense of autonomy is, is really good, but you really need to generate a shared project. I think there is a risk in the confederated university of becoming islands, collective islands in this confederation, and you need it with a shared project. And in my opinion, I mean, our university has been a strong pedagogical uh, project, a common project, Shared our project has been the key just to, to give this clue that uh, imprints uh, the whole university. I don't have half as much experience as, as you have, John, about working within cooperatives, but um, having spent a lot, of, a lot of years working within higher education institutions, um, and you realise once you're out of that, that you become um, quite brainwashed in a way, or you, you, you come to accept that there are ways that you can do things and ways that you can't. So being able to take a step back from that and actually start from the beginning again, 
um, allows you to reclaim all the things that you think are important. I mean, I've, I teach in art design and creative arts, which tend to be, in some ways, quite anarchic and very cooperative in the way that um, teaching happens. Um, and it's always been a source of great frustration uh, being part of an organisation which seems to be constantly working against you. So my experience so far of working with the Cooperative University, I'm working with the Feral Arts School Cooperative, has been a, a wonderful sense of freedom from all the things, that, all the baggage that you realise that um, you've had to take with you um, when you're working in more formal situations. And although this isn't um, specifically about working with the Cooperative University, I do think there's a moment of time at the moment from um, my colleagues who work in other universities and from the feeling that you get, um, we've been doing some research into other alternative art schools, that there is something happening at this moment which um, is making things shift a bit. So I think it's the moment to be pressing forward with um, this particular venture. And uh, I think once you start, and once you realise that actually people don't stop you and say, no, you can't do that, um, it gains momentum and it's the most fulfilling experience. So I think probably that's all I want to say, but um, I am quite new to this, and uh, it's uh, really exciting. Obviously, everything that everybody said is wondrous and, and helps me think about what, what I think is different about a cooperative university. But, I'm going to be a bit of a party poo because I'm going to say two things which you know, I think you have to take on board as, as quite challenging. One is I think um, you know, what's different about Cooperative University is that we will expect everybody who participates in it to work really hard. And I don't just mean churning out essays. I'm talking about the responsibility that comes with being properly democratically engaged in something and really, really making it work. And that is a big let go for lots of us who, you know, there's lots of good things about letting go. You can't be experts in everything. You don't want to be experts in everything. But I think that is a, a big, you know, a big challenge for us and for the people who come and work and live and, 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 and are students at our university. And the other big let go, I think, is, and, and, and I, I really welcome this, and it is scary and it's risky, which is, you know, letting go about our assumptions we have about what knowledge is. You know, what is expertise? What is cleverness? What does a clever person look like? You know, when I, I talked about a, a very good friend of mine who's a, a tremendous, uh, uh, works in sort of disability rights activism, and she said, why are you calling it a university, sir? That is just starting in the wrong place. It, you know, it's an idea that's full of assumptions and, you know, and ideas about, you know, hierarchies, what would it be? And, and you know, she, I could see where she was coming from on that because her view is, and it's a view I share, is we, we are really trying to rethink here how we make knowledge, how we make that better world. And they sound really high flown ideas, but I think that's where we are. And it, you know, it does take quite a lot of bravery. And as someone, you know, as you know, it's about me and I left school at 15, I thought everything in a book was true. I really did. You know, experts wrote books, didn't they? So how do you actually start saying, well, the expertise is here, without it sounding cliché, you know, without it sounding on your you know, voice? It, it's not about that. That is what the difference is going to be, I think. So it, it is going to be challenging and quite hard work, but we welcome that, and I think everybody who's involved recognises that. And I think, John, you would probably say that's what, you know, it's not all going to be plain sailing. It's going to be hard work, but that's good. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to repeat anything that's already been said because I agree with everything that's been said. But because I'm at the end of the line, I've got to think of something new to say. So I have got three things I want to say actually. First of all, I think it's a really exciting time for us um, in higher education. I think this is the time now to have a cooperative university. Students have been excluded from higher education for such a long time. Students who now go to college, university to study BAs and MAs have to have a lot of money to be able to go and do that. My experience, and certainly the experience of some of my fellow cooperators has been, we've really struggled to get adults back into education. The ad adult education bursary went back in 94 or something. Um, so for adults wanting to study, it's, 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 such a, it, it's such a difficult area for adults to be able to access. The co-op university is an ideal opportunity, and it's coming at the right time where people are being excluded from university. They want to go to college, they want to study, 
but they want to study somewhere that, first of all, they feel that they can afford. They don't want to end up getting out of university with this huge, great big debt that they've got to start their lives with. So we're talking about class here, and I think that's really important. Um, secondly, I think there are an awful lot of people who want to study, but they want to study in a different way. They may have left school and had a very, very bad experience at school. I am one of these people who left school like Scylla. I got no qualifications at all, went back and studied when I was 30 in an environment that supported me in that. And that's what the Clark University is going to do. It's going to support learners who've had poor experiences, bad experiences, um, sometimes quite damaging experiences, who want to study, don't quite know how to do it, don't quite know whether they can do it, don't even have the vocabulary to perhaps talk about what it is that's holding them back. The Clark University is going to provide that. It's not just going to provide the academic um, um, kind of experience. It's also going to provide the, the support, the, the learning, um, and it's going to, all, all kind of pastoral stuff that it's going to support students in, to allow students who perhaps don't feel confident, confident about going into a classroom again um, to do that. So I think it's going to open up I think it's going to open up education and learning to so many people that they're at the moment being excluded. That's one thing, and I think that's really, really exciting about the Cop University, because it's, there is nowhere like this anywhere in this country. You've got to go to Spain. <laughs> so we're trying to you know, provide something that we can, we can also link to internationally, because I think that's another part of this. I think it's about having international links. I worked on an international um, trade union program, a BA and an MA program. International links are really, really important. We've got so much to share across the globe. We've got so much to learn from each other. And we've got so much to kind of um, offer to students from an international perspective. And I think that's really important that we approach this with kind of an international view as well. Again, that's what excites us about the Carp University. The other two things, very, very briefly, have been touched on. The democratisation of the classroom, really important to us as practitioners, certainly within our, within our experience from Ruskin College. Um, it was all about the democracy in the classroom. It's all about looking at the students' experiences, linking the students' experiences to the learning that's taking place, with a view to them leaving, with not just um, employment opportunities, going out and getting a job, but also leaving as people who want to give something back to society, to want to create a society that isn't just for them, but it's for everybody, to be able to participate, to be able to have access, and to make changes. Because I think the Carp University is also very much about challenge. It's about challenging the status quo, saying things can be done in a different way. So I think it's a really, really exciting opportunity, and this is why Red are really, really pleased to be involved in this. That we offer. So when we became a co-op, and we're still in the very, very much in the developmental stages in terms of our structure, if you like, getting together, um, we realised that we had to actually make a living. So three people are working full time. Two of us work as freelancers and are developing programmes through our relationships with trade unions. So fundamentally, we have relationships that we've had for many years with trade unions. So, for example, I run a programme for the National Union of Journalists. Um, another colleague runs a programme for Unison, um, for one of their regions. We also run professional development programmes for different trade unions and also um, charities and non-governmental non organisations delivering staff development. Um, and again, um, it's our relationship with students that is at the heart of this. Our students decide what learning takes place. And all our whole approach to education and learning is framed within the co cooperative framework. So everything that's delivered has that kind of political cooperative framework, whatever it might be, whether it's behaviour management in schools, whether it's leadership training, whether it's training reps to represent their members. Whatever it is, it's framed within that cooperative framework. Our involvement with the Co-op University, we've been involved fairly early on within the working group. We sit on the interim academic board and we, um, what we do will link into the BA and the MAs kind of later on down the line in terms of us being um, practitioners. We'll be working as practitioners on that programme. So, and it will link to the work that we're doing kind of outreach as well. Exploring options for, for accreditation and when we met um, with uh, other emerging 
uh, groups within the Federation and we realised that actually there's a, there's a lot of people you know, that were beginning to have similar ideas or have had similar ideas for a long time. Uh, we are rooted in what's called the generalist tradition of the Scottish democratic intellect. There's a little bit more about that in the poster over there. Basically that means that um, education in Scotland, although it's very much being eroded uh, just as much as it has been um, south of the border, has traditionally been about a well-rounded, balanced education to create active citizens rather than hyper-specialisation simply in, in one area of expertise. So we very much want to bring that forward and make that available to the wider corporate movement as well um, uh, through, through our ability and involvement in the corporate Right, this was um, summer 2017 when Hull was UK City of Culture. Hull School of Art and Design, 150 year old tradition of offering our education art in the city. We had worked very hard, my colleagues and I, at raising the profile of the school during 2017 and welcoming people in and making sure people knew what we did. That's uh, Bob Roberta Smith, the campaigning artist, who spent a week with us doing particular projects. So um, it was all going really well. And then by December 2017, uh, we were aware that the college who owned us, it's a college, it's an FEHE college, was going to make severe cuts because they were in a, very, uh, 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 they were in a financial crisis. And we realised that many of the cuts were going to hit the whole school of art and design. So in a few months, we've gone from hero to zero. And by July 2018, 35 out of 40 of the staff took voluntary redundancy. The majority of courses were cut and 160 years of provision was decimated. So, with 35 skilled artists educators available, we decided to seize the moment. And in September 18, having actually, coincidentally almost, had a couple of really inspiring workshops with both Scylla and Mike, um, we set up a community interest company with cooperative values. Um, so we became a new art school for Hull that knows no boundaries. We've got seven founder members and about 15 tutors in a group that's growing as we bring on new courses. We've got no building, which is great, which is very free freeing, but have developed partnerships that are providing us with spaces around the city where we run our classes. Uh, we obtained a small grant in, uh, in September 2017 from the whole 2017 Legacy Group and actually our first course was populated by the wonderful whole 2017 volunteers of which there were about 4,000 during that, that year mm. and um, we ran a foundation course which lasted for 12 weeks and gave us a general introduction to art and design education. And then in November, we held an exhibition of that work and a public launch of the Feral Arts School. So since then, we gained some funding from Arts Council England, uh, which has enabled us to set up a, a mix of short courses and day schools, plus two more runs of what's proven to be a very popular Feral Foundation course. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're working out a mixed funding model, which obviously is going to be crucial in terms of sustaining um, our practice in the future, so that's an ongoing process. Our teaching model reflects an inclusive and collaborative pedagogy which actually is, is um, endemic to art and design teaching anyway, which we hope encourages students to achieve things they didn't imagine they would. Uh, there's some comments there. Um, and then as this student reflects, offering just the right amount of guidance and artistic permission. But the most exciting part, which was sort of unexpected perhaps, um, was that uh, we've become involved with Cooperative University. We're learning how to function as a cooperative, uh, supported by the training offered by Co-op UK, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. and by being a member of the Cooperative College. And so as part of the Cooperative University planning, um, it's an absolute revelation after being locked into our conventional higher education structure that people actually um, collaborate, listen, share ideas and principles that I think will offer a truly... Uh, original and different sort of higher education experience. So we're hoping to use this to go on and at some time uh, in 2020 offer a degree course and some progression from the courses that we're already running. So the three programmes that we're going to lead with at BA level are International Development Cooperation, Social Movements and Parallel Histories, Cooperative Leadership and then also a PG Certificate in Cooperative Education and um, Practice. But these programmes are just the start. We've had to necessarily start quite narrow. 
um, and we can't do everything all at once. So these are the ones we, we plan to start with next year. But we've got um, various ideas in development, in various stages of development, so cooperative studies, democratic practice, community history and culture, human ecology, arts and community, and alternative forms of social and economic organisation, as well as the nature and future of work. Now, now we're not proposing the cooperative college delivers and develops all these programmes, but these will be done in, in partnership with our other um, federation members. In 2016, the university decided that it didn't suit their idea of how they were going to meet their objectives, I might say moral imperatives, uh, of providing adult education. So we decided we would become a cooperative, and we were, in, were inspired by Mike and Joss uh, and Sarah in Lincoln that this was something which we could really go and do. Uh, and I don't want to dwell on it too much, but we went through a various, we, you know, we spoke to a number of existing universities about validation arrangements, and they were just too bureaucratic and too expensive. And then this amazing thing happened when the government decided it wanted to have private universities, but in the process <laughs> opened the door to this really exciting project. Um, and every time we meet up and talk, there's more people coming on board. So it's really exciting. We, the society members, believe in education as a public good. It benefits both society as a whole and its diverse communities by enabling self-improvement, mutual improvement and civic participation. So our idea is that we're definitely going to be civic facing, that we're going to be responsive to local needs and we're going to do that by actually finding a mode of delivery which suits adult learners. And one of the things we know is that actually really quite small groups suit them. Um, and for really for us the cooperative model offers the freedom to make decisions which are really firmly grounded on the needs of learners, on teaching, or somewhat pompously, as I put it, and um, we'll use these values and the ethics of cooperation to build an institution which prioritises pedagogy over profit, because we all like a bit of alliteration. But it does actually get to the very core of what we're trying to do, um, that it's not about balance sheets all the time, it's about finding the ways to do what suit learners best.